Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing this evening or morning, whatever time it is for you? Um, we have a whole bunch of people watching already. We have a whole bunch of people in the in our live cast as well. I guess we can do a quick introduction of everybody. So right next to me, well, I'm Sarah and, and Julie. We are team members. I never members. know where to oh, put my hand. So. <laughs> and then right next to Julie is Jen. She's our next week's um, Wiki Tree Challenge genealogy guest star. And then we have Mindy, who is the full, the coordinator of the full Wiki Tree Challenge. And then we have Janet and Joan, who are the captains of Jen's Week. And then we have the another Sarah, who is the captain of Johnny's Week. And then we have Johnny, who we're wrapping up his week today. Pretty much is, I feel like everybody's pretty much wrapped up. Are people still working on Johnny's? Is it, has it ended? Are we done? <laughs> yeah, there are some people that stayed pretty interested in a few of those profiles, so... Everybody was, I, there was a lot of movement in your profiles, Johnny. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just a quick, well, I guess let me, let's see who's here. So we have Greg and Cheryl, and we have Chris Witten, our Wiki Tree in Chief, watching Hillary. We have Kay, Robert, Karen, Lowe, Cheryl, I think I said that already, Emily, Debbie and Barry Root from Oregon, Elizabeth. Oh, and then hello, Alesh, Jimmy, and Robert. I think I said everybody. So for anybody who is not familiar with what's going on, maybe you just popped in or maybe you have no idea what's going on, the Wiki Tree Challenge. It's our year-long event where each week we take a genealogy guest star. So, for instance, this past week we had Johnny, and we... A team of wiki treaters basically try to improve their profile to the best of their ability to show what we can do and we collaborate together. Um, it's part of our year of accuracy and our goal is to improve wiki tree to make friends. And yeah, so that's basically what we've been doing. That's the wiki tree challenge. And this coming week, we're going to be starting Jen, but we will be currently talking about what we found with Johnny's profiles. There's been a lot of good stuff. Um, and if anybody ever has any questions or comments, you can post it in the chat and we'll mention it or ask it if need be. So Sarah was the captain, but she's been having some audio issues. So Mindy is going to kind of kind of take over for what we will be talking about, what we found on Johnny's tree. But first I wanted to show um, we'll kind of show where we were before, um, like what we started with, with Johnny's tree. Uh, let me share the right screen. Okay. Um, so on Wiki Tree, this was his beginning. We made a fan chart. This was his beginning tree. And then we also have his, so he wasn't connected on Wiki Tree. Um, when we first started, but now he is connected. Sneak peek. <laughs> um, and then we also had his My Heritage tree as well, which was pretty fleshed out. And so that's kind of what we were working with. Not as many was on Wikitree, but we added a whole bunch of profiles and I think other profiles that he didn't have on his My Heritage tree. So if you want to take over, Mindy? Yeah. yeah, and you know, and like Sarah was saying, there was already a lot of research done. And I think one of our team members, Ian uh, Speed, said it the best. And he just said that Johnny's tree was very thoroughly, thoroughly researched. So, you know, that everything that was out there that wasn't done was a brick wall, pretty much. It was not proven. And we spent a lot of, we could have spent weeks on this, but we spent a lot of time just trying to prove up to what he did have. With a, with a good strong paper trail so that we could get to the other ones. Now, um, we were definitely trying to find some interesting finds along the way though. And if you go, Sarah, did you want to do the ones in the interesting find room? Oh, which which one which which one are we gonna start with? We're going to start with Herman Pearl's line. 
Which one? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Herman Pearl's Oh, line. I have that. Herman so that's Pearl. the next one. That's the next one. Sorry. <laughs> and and I tell you what, from a personal standpoint, we you know we all grow and learn from each other when we do these things. Um, I've learned way more than I ever thought I would know about German or Polish records. So. <laughs> But it's been really fun to, to get in there, even though these people were proven. And we had for um, on Solomon Pearl, he was a haberdashery dealer, which is a person who sells this, the what we would call sewing notions today. So dressmaking, knitting, buttons, stuff like that. The name just sticks with me. It's quaint. It's not something that's used anymore. Um, we had, well, we had several on that. And actually, for Samuel, another thing that we had is he had lost several several children. And, you know, until you really start looking and comparing the information, you don't. You can't relate it as much to what was going on in their life. But they lost their daughter, Charlotte. She was only one year, seven months, and 18 days. That's all. They had already lost Heinrich, who died a week before his first birthday. Now, when Charlotte was born... Um, she got really soon after got pregnant with Sol their son Solomon, who is Johnny's direct ancestor. And Charlotte died just five days before that baby was born. So, you know, I just, it, my heart breaks for him. I can't even imagine the, yeah. you know, the angst mm -hmm. that they were going through when, when that last child was born. Um, we did have other things we had on off of Florence Cooper's line, Harry Cooper. Now he met his future wife while boarding with her family. So I'm not sure if that was a good thing to have them as future in-laws or a bad thing, but he was a saddle maker by trade. And I kind of think, um, you know, he might've been apprenticing and learning from her father who was a saddle maker. And that's why he was lodging with them. So that was just kind of interesting that they wound up together. Mm -hmm. Can I? Can I interrupt real quick, Mindy? We also had this profile first to kind of, as today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, mm -hmm. and uh, Herman was uh, part of the Holocaust. So we kind of have, and he did have other several um, ancestors that were also part, and we had a little sticker, he fled to England. And then they put, I, there was a whole bunch of other ones they had put, they had found that were, part of um, the Holocaust. So we just wanted to bring that up as today is, well, I guess for some people it was yesterday, <laughs> depending on where you were, are you where you are in the world, but just wanted to bring that up really quick before we moved on. Yeah, and he was actually a survivor. Um, there's a museum that has hundreds of letters that he wrote about his life and the, yeah. you know, the content of the Are those something you've been able to see yourself? I have, on? yeah. So I went to the Wiener Museum here in London and uh, had a good read of those. And a lot of them are really heartbreaking because they're letters from Jewish people uh, in Germany who obviously knew that Herman was a great guy and he'd gone to England and maybe he could help them out. So the letters kind of increase in desperation. They're like, you know, please, can you see if you can get me some kind of um, letter saying that you know who I am and that I'm okay and that I can come over? And I don't know how many of these people did actually get over there, but um, yeah, it's all quite heartrending, really, to read. So that is um, one of our interesting finds. Well, what were we going to move on? You had a slide okay. for that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's really, you know, it, it's just stunning. You, you know these things happen in our history, but to read about somebody's life that was so directly affected, you know, you, you're, it's just, it makes you speechless. Mm hmm Yeah, it's, sometimes you find out good things about your family, and then sometimes you find maybe not so, some sad, some sad stories, unfortunately. So... So I, I have the next one I have to open is James Jones. I don't know if that's who you want to talk about next. Okay, yeah. or <laughs> Mindy. For him, it, his interesting fact was that he worked for the Chinese Maritime Customs. 
his two daughters were born in China and his first wife died there. Hmm. The, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, especially since all of the people in these branches are, you know, a lot of them are really close together until you step over, you know, onto other branches. And location-wise, you know, we did find some, um, like, migration documents where the son would come over and then the father would come to the same place. And So... Now, was there anything else about James Jones that we found that we, or maybe about his ancestors? Um, um, she went on to say Isaac Jones. This one we got from, from Joan actually in her group. They found Isaac Jones and Mary Hodges interesting. They transcribed his will in hope of breaking down that brick wall. Um, there were several places like this. And once again, Johnny's tree was so incredibly researched you know, that it was getting down to the fine point. I mean, there, uh, our people had maps out and it's, it's great collaboration. We, not only do we have the forum that we use to go ahead and communicate and ask questions, but we talk in Discord as well. Uh, we have a spreadsheet so you can keep track of what your profile is on, you know, but we can talk back and forth and say, hey, do you know this county? You know, would it be logical for this person to have, say, married in this other town? Um, we just have a lot of resources on hand. And we actually, and then Joan is actually here with us. Do you have anything to add, Joan, since you were working on some of these profiles for? Joan? Yeah, if I, if I remember properly, uh, this uh, man had property in a village in Herefordshire. And we thought that might be a good place to look for his parents. I've been uh, trying quite hard. We didn't get around family. <laughs> I've tried so hard. I wonder if his wife's parents might have been from from Brimfield in Hereford in Hereford Jones. But I'm just not sure. It's so yeah. so difficult, isn't it? And I think one of his tenants was called Jones as well. Right. Yeah, I guess we weren't able to break past. Um, no, no, Mr. And Mrs. Jones. I don't think there's any shame in that, is there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Now, often those branches, though, Joe no. <laughs> did break down a brick wall on that, and that was for John Hopkins. Um, he lived an impressive 88 years, witnessing most of the 1600s. And back in that time, that was a pretty old age. Wow. That was this one, right? Born in 1608. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I, in well, I managed to get this guy's will, but I did not know about these parents. That's exciting. Yeah, cool. Yeah, William Hopkins and... Who found those parents? I guess Joan? Hey, that was my yeah. idea. Joan. Good work, Joan. Thanks. Very cool. We've, yeah, we went real 1600s. We went pretty far back. <laughs> yeah, I think the answer to finding the parents was in his age. And um, I think you had 1830 on the ancestry tree. I was probably guessing, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, when we found his very a record it said he was a very old man so we looked further back for a baptism earlier uh -huh. and that's how we found them nice job yeah and our, our top performer this week actually was joan whitaker the captain for next week we have <laughs> three people that earn the extra bounty points that you get for either <laughs> finding a mistake or you know breaking through a brick wall and that would be joan whitaker maddie hardman and janet wild so we have Janet here too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Amazing work. Your two top, top <laughs> oh, performers. <yeah. laughs> uh, top on the England <laughs> project. Yeah. I guess it was because the yeah because the England profiles. So who else? I have a whole bunch of other profiles open. So we had so we had Isaac. We talked about Isaac Jones, which. And then I also have Isaac Gray. Oh yeah, interesting. Guy. A lot of Isaacs and Johns I have seen. <laughs> yeah, they had a, they had at least four people working on that one, collaborating. Um, some of them weren't even necessarily signed up for the challenge, and they just got really interested in the wills, you know, and what they found on the on those people. It looks like we found 
Look, Isaac was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Isaac. Yep. No, no, there, there was another <laughs> Isaac as well, but I don't think he had any children. I was hoping to find Isaac oh, living yeah. around the corner. Oh, family. then Isaac also had a child named Isaac. But they did, they were able to confirm um, Alice's maiden name by using the, the wills of Isaac Gray. Yeah. And then we Alice's uncle, William Hopkins. And then we found his, her. Oh, look, we went, we got his, her dad, and then his parents and his parents' parents. Very cool. Nice. Yeah. So I was missing William and Maria there. That's, that's good news. William Hopkins and Maria Farmer. It's always a nice feeling to see uh, see another surname there, you know? Like, okay. Well, so we found their marriage as well. Yeah, one that Stanford isn't Joan. <laughs> Very good. Good job, Joan. Round of applause. Nice work. Yeah, I think that one was a bit of a problem because I think the baptism actually says the mother is Martha. And we looked for Martha and couldn't find any trace of the Martha at all. And then uh, we looked for the uh, children that were baptised with a father called William and there were four. Uh, one had a mother Mary, um, two had Marie, and then there were the one with Martha. But the dates fitted as though they were the same family. Right. And uh, we couldn't find any trace of another William anywhere in the area. So we're presuming that uh, Mary and Martha are transcription errors. You know, but uh, really, we'd have liked to have seen the original records, to be sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, um, I think, um, yeah, it doesn't seem outlandish to, to assume that for now. Mm -hmm. And for anybody who comes to this profile later, we they did add a little research note about what Joan just said. Mm -hmm. So that anybody who is also questioning, which is also really great about Wikitree's biography, you can add these notes as to why you think this and why you think that and why you chose this route. So. Right, and it leaves breadcrumbs for future researchers. And, you know, when she was asking, was anybody still working through this? We had somebody actually right now that thought they were really close to breaking down another brick wall. If they don't get it totally proven, all the notes will be there. So that can be easily picked up later and people aren't duplicating the work. It's really handy. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, next we have here, I have Leonard David Cooper. Also from England. Right. And he was somebody that actually there was a very, very um, detailed inquest into his accident and subsequent death. So, which really wasn't that common, you know, at that time. A whole bunch of newspaper mentions. I guess because of his accident. What what kind of accident was it? A, a collision of a wagon? I'm just kind of breezing through this. Yeah, I was not aware of this. This is all new to me. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So we have like, a little snippet of the newspaper. Um, so we... Yeah. Because he, he, he was a butcher, and I know he went, I think he was a butcher, if I remember correctly, and he went bankrupt, as his father-in-law had. And I found out a lot about this branch because the, the father-in-law, John Midlane, had been a bankrupt, and all of the original papers for that were in the, um, the National Archives here in London. And I was able to get this incredibly detailed insight into what life was like in the Isle of Wight in the 1840s, obviously amazing. He described his blind father um, you know, coming over uh, for breakfast every morning and <laughs> these weird things. But um, this has passed me by, so that's that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. It says there was a that there was a wagon collision, and then he and somebody else got thrown off out of the wagon. And he was right. found unconscious on the ground. And of course, to show the difference in the times, they were racing by these other wagons at nine or ten miles an hour. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, that's it's irresponsible, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> way too fast <laughs> and the inquest report on that is quite interesting because they didn't bring the collision in as the cause of death right. they brought in a lung infection i believe there's some mm. really graphic descriptions of the post-mortem mm. inflammation mm. in the right lung 
And so was, was that via um, newspaper searches, Joan, that you found that, or was it via the Isle of Wight Family History Society inquest database? I think it were newspaper uh, yeah. searches. It were Maddie that found it. Very cool. Maddie found those? Yeah, yeah. Maddie found those. Yeah, yeah. Maddie, yeah, Maddie yeah. Hardman. She's one of our bounty hunters. One of our top three. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Maddie. Um, next we have William Blackburn. Okay. Now, he was a wine and spirit merchant. And his notable um, interesting thing was that when his business failed, and of course, this wasn't great for him, he was imprisoned for debt. Um, yeah. The interesting part there is that he was in prison right around the same time Charles Dickens' father was in prison there. Yeah. So they were most likely, you know, together. And Dickens did write a lot about the prison and um, the yeah. nearby church. Yeah, I've spent so long on this guy. I just cannot, I can't find a death, so I can't anchor him anywhere. And his name is just about too common. But, um, yeah. 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 It was, looks like Ian was working on this profile. Ian Speed. It doesn't look like they found. Well, I wasn't familiar person. with one of the children there. So, because I spotted this is one thing I spied on before coming on tonight. So, Benjamin <laughs> Charles, I was not familiar with, familiar with him. And I, he seems to have died after the 1841 census, which made me think, well, maybe there's some clues. But I couldn't find him in the 1841 mm -hmm. census. So, sad times, really. But anyway. Mm -hmm. So we uh, a sip a uh, child he did not know about. Yeah, which is actually very useful, obviously, as we mm -hmm. all know. Genealogists. So. It was Ian. Thanks, Ian. He added Thanks, something. Ian. And next we have John Midlane. Looks like we got some ancestors for John too, not just a father and his mother, Elizabeth yeah. Mew. Okay, so I don't think I had Elizabeth Pedder there. I think I think these are new people over there. And her, her father, Richard. We have oh, Richard. Elizabeth, oh, Elizabeth Pedder. Um, right who was going to talk about Elizabeth? Janet or Joan? <laughs> what a voice. Um, yeah, I found Elizabeth in, in um, yeah, I, I worked up the door in mid lane lines um, and sources that gave me information that cross referenced and confirmed the relationship. Um, Braiding the Isle of Wight, I actually have relatives that live in Braiding on the Isle of Wight. Really? Um, so it's an area I know uh, um, from my teenage years <laughs> and, yeah. and before. Uh, but it wasn't a name I'd come across before on the island, so that was um, new, interesting to follow it through. And then working back from Elizabeth, um, I found her parents. Um, and then a little bit further back, so, but that was interesting to see because the family obviously had been on the island and in braiding for a number of generations. Mm. Um, uh, I can't remember um, whether I found any occupations though. I keep thinking Sadler um, comes to mind for one of the profiles I was working on, um, but I can't remember Richard, which line that was. Richard, uh, was that? So, yeah. But I'm, I've lit it. I think I managed to add all the children. Well, That's great. So there's quite yeah. a number of children, mm -hmm. which is not unusual given the time have had children. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So we, so, well, but, yeah, not all of them read some, some I couldn't somewhere. find death certificates for, so. Mm -hmm. At least all of my notes. All called society. We still have quite a few profiles. Was there any ones that you guys were any really interesting ones? I know we had some still open. We had John Highton. Yeah, we call him Hayington over here. Well, that's what I call Hayton, him. Hayton, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am known for pronouncing things. Not at all. It's a place <laughs> near County Durham, apparently. I've never been there, but um, 
It's always one of my favorite names to research in the tree because it's kind of unusual. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I did a lot of work on that line. It was quite interesting. And like you'll say, easy to research because it's an unusual name. Yeah. But I believe Lizzie Griffiths is still working on this one. Mm -hmm. um, she found the she found John's christening and found that she had a brother christened the same day, possibly a twin. Oh. And uh, going on from that, she's actually found the parents' marriage. And I believe it's a John Arrington and somebody Chapman. Mm -hmm. so still working on that. Very cool. And then we have a Sarah Upton. Yep. As well. And then, did we already talk about Elizabeth Mew Midlane? We might have. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That, there you're getting into the actual brick walls. Um, mm -hmm. Sarah's parents were found for Elizabeth. Her parents were found, William Mew and Elizabeth mm -hmm. Peddler. Yeah, we um, did. John Hopkins, which I think we've looked at or talked about at some point, they found the christening record for him, so that's a, a brick wall breakthrough. Yeah, I think I'm counting maybe two or three. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I also have here John Dunlop, Dunlop ah. from Ireland. Yeah, I think, I think Maddie was working on this one, Maddie Hardman. Um, it doesn't seem like we've found parents, but. Uh, I, I do know his parents actually, but yeah, his his life obviously had had a tragic end. So it's a, it's an yeah, they said his body was found in the harbor. Um, Maddie did say mm -hmm. that he was quite a character, and there was a lot printed about him in the papers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And then we have a John. Uh, did we talk about John Hopkins? We did. We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we were opening other. We just kept going all over the place. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, you know Cooper. what we can do, Sarah, is we can let him know who actually connected Johnny to the Wiki Tree oh, Global yes. Tree. They basically they connected you, I think, the first day to the tree. I think yes. it was like in the first 24 hours you got connected. <laughs> which is so big. We, which was the connection? Did we find out? That was Nanette Pazuti, and she went ahead and worked sideways from Rosa Benjamin. And just kept working sideways until yeah. he was attached. So, yeah, and, I know that path. and the funny thing is, is like two hours later, somebody had made a completely different connection to the global tree. So mm -hmm. he was connected in more than one place. Yes. Now you are connected, Johnny, to the to Wiki Tree, to the Excellent global news. family tree. Yeah, very cool. And we're looking at another brick wall broken here, I think, because I had this. I, I saw a christening, and I thought that it might be good, but I hadn't really finished evaluating it. That's a couple of years ago. So I'll, I'll look at this with some interest as well. This is John Cooper. And then we already kind yeah. of just go, sorry. I was going to open That's it. okay. I was going to say, Sarah, do you mind showing, um, well, you, did you show the you, final charts? Did I open? I feel like I did open the final you, chart where it is. Before. I don't, don't know where I put it. Oh no! I was going out. to. I was going to show. I was going to do the process of opening the fan chart, kind of showing everybody. But we can do that really quick. So yeah. this is. We were kind of look. They even add little DNA confirmation. It was Emma who was working on that, right? The yeah, DNA Emma confirmation. Yeah, really hard on that. Mhm. Mm so it looks a lot fuller than it did before. Uh, we can look at your fan chart. Um, to kind of. Show. So this was the before chart that we had, and then how? Let's add some generations. Yeah, and a shout out to Greg Clark. He has done an awesome job with these fan charts, and mm -hmm. they really do help show visually um, not only what the changes are, but what areas you still need to work on. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to zoom out, but it's not working very well. Um, but yeah, look, it looks a lot fuller than it did before. I probably had another generation, eight generations. 
no, my computer does not want to zoom out or in. So, but if you see like this side is a lot fuller than it was before that we had on Wikitree. Yeah, there was nothing there. And then also the other side, it's still kind of, I guess his, his maternal side was a little bit more difficult to crack. Looks yeah, like. <laughs> you, know, you know where I'm from, right? <laughs> um, yeah, and I, th I think if you're Irish, you, you get used to this. But obviously, there's some stuff there where I have privileged family information that enables me to make connections that your researchers wouldn't necessarily be able to do. So yeah. I can find a way to get that onto Wikitree, hopefully, so that mm -hmm. it's recorded. Yes. And then we also had Greg put together, He well, he did this on himself, his surname, your surname list before everything. So we just had a few surnames and he put together all the surnames from after um, yeah. that we had added to Wikitree. Yeah, and there are a lot of peripherals now. So, you know, where the um, siblings have been added, their spouses have been added. Do you have um, K's report handy? That's another one that's been really helpful is K9 with her app, the yeah. biotech has let mm -hmm. us, we can pull up every profile, see which ones aren't sourced see how many we've added. You can look at the totals on those. Mm -hmm. And what I what I had when I checked it last is there were 119 new profiles. Yes, that's what it says. So profiles created during the whole challenge actually created profiles as 309. For the, yeah, including the peripherals. Mm hmm yeah. And out of all that, only two are marked unsourced because mm -hmm. we didn't have a good enough solid source to consider it. So but all the rest of them have sources. Mm -hmm. Then a total, we had a total of 389 points and then about 2,500 total contributions edits two profiles. Which kind of, that's... I mean, we had Joan, Maddie, Janet, Ian, Mindy did a lot, Karen Lowe, Lucy, and then Nanette. N Nanette. <laughs> uh, we had a whole bunch of people working on your tree. Amazing. Well, thanks so much to everyone mm -hmm. who worked on it. I mean, what, what an honor and a privilege. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, then also, they, uh, I wanted to show one more thing. They put together this free space page to kind of collect all of the resources and anything that they didn't maybe have right away like images that they didn't assign because they hadn't made a profile for yet. So they have this um, resource page that they made um, with links to different places to find resources. Um, I just wanted to show that really quick and they added different um, documents and pictures here as well. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, we, As well as individual profiles, we also have the uh, the the way to make other kinds of profiles like this, free space pages, as we call them, to put any kind of information that you want. So this was kind of like a research collaborative profile that they just kind of worked on together. Very cool. Mm -hmm. and, and then we also use the G2G forum a lot. And I know, especially me, um, I never thought I'd be researching German or Polish records, but I've really <laughs> learned a lot you know but you can put it out in the g2g okay i have a german baptism or i have this death record what does it say and it doesn't take no time at all and somebody jumps in there if not more than one somebody and they answer back and they break it down and transcribe it for us um this time we got a lot of help from dieter Lurens. uh did a lot of uh, transcription help so that was that was incredible mm -hmm. so 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 what do you think johnny I think, uh, unless there was um, anything else anybody wanted to add. Um, so I think that's quite excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really know what to expect, except I knew that you were you were going to be transcribing everything and getting me into the tree, which is obviously amazing. Uh, but I wasn't honestly necessarily expecting any brick walls to fall, so that's really cool. You know. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much to everyone. Well, thank you for letting us uh, pick at Pleasure. your tree. Come on, I'd be crazy not to. And imagine if I said, no, no, you can't do money. Yeah. You can't do yeah, money. like Lewis says, nothing like letting a dozens of researchers working on your chi for a week. Hey, John. No arguments there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, uh, if there's anything, and anybody has any questions for Johnny, but now I get, we will, I guess we will work our way on to Jen. You know, we'll, we'll be starting Jen's week pretty much after we finish this live cast. 
I know they've already been preparing for your week, Jen. Joan and Janet have been, are they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> they're ready. Um, so I guess just to start, Jen, do you want to give us a little brief intro about yourself, who you are, what you do? Sure. Uh, happy to. Um, and I'm saying hi to Johnny really quick because we're not going to be at Ritzek this year. So. <laughs> um, so I'm Jen Baldwin. I've been researching since I was about 10 years old uh, with the help of my grandmother. Um, off and on for many years, but for the last almost eight years I've been employed by Find My Past. So I've been living and breathing the genealogy dream uh, ever since. Um, so I do a, a, an extensive amount of research on um, social history, fraternal organizations, that kind of thing. Um, for Find My Past, I'm the North American content uh, expert um, and manager, and I also run our global ambassador program. So I kind of have my fingers in just about everything across the business. Um, it's just a pure delight to work with a, a genealogy company every day. I love it. Very. Very cool. I guess we are, we have some. And so if anybody has any questions for Jen while we were talking, please put them in the chat. We do have some already kind of pre-made questions just to kind of. So I guess I'll start. So what got you? You say you started at 10 years old. What got yeah. you interested um, in technology? So yeah, I think like many kids across the United States, I was assigned the interview your older relative uh, project, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whatever grade that was. Um, and I wanted to interview my grandfather. Um, they lived about a mile from us where I grew up, um, so not very far. And I didn't realize at the time that my grandfather had the first stages of Parkinson's disease. Um, so um, grandma sat down with us to make sure that he didn't say anything incorrectly. Um, so I actually ended up kind of interviewing grandma instead of grandpa about grandpa's family. So it was a little bit awkward uh, as a 10 year old, um, but she, she must have seen something in me because she started telling me that um, if I came down uh, to the house and helped with some of the chores, because um, my grandfather was a retired uh, dairy farmer. So they still had a couple of cows and a few other um, livestock and the small orchard and things. So if I came down after school and helped with the chores, she would um, tell me a few more stories. And she always baked fresh cookies when I came. <laughs> and so I, she would just feed me cookies and I would oh. just, I literally just consumed it all at once, right? The stories, the cookies. They go hand in hand. I still research with cookies like next on my desk, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was the start. And then she started taking me to cemeteries uh, and family celebrations and things. Ironically, she never showed me any of the documents that she had collected. She did a little bit of genealogy herself. Um, she never shared any of the paperwork with me, including the letters from the American Civil War that she had hidden in the closet. We didn't know about until after she passed away. Um, wow. But I think that she saw right away that that a pedigree chart might bore a 12 year old or a 14 year old, whereas the stories and actually going places and experiencing things would be much more engaging. So she actually she did a pretty good job, I think, all things considered. Now, who is your favorite ancestor that you found, Jen? Oh, my gosh. I have to pick <laughs> one. Um, wow. I get the okay. easy questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much time do we have? Um, <laughs> uh, I guess, um, so the, the one that I've researched the longest is Oscar Fitzalan Brown. He's my second great grandfather on the paternal side. Uh, he was a veteran of the Civil War, homesteaded in Nebraska, had a bunch of kids. Um, and for a long time, that's where we as a family kind of, that was the end of our line. That's all we knew back to was Oscar. Um, so my the challenge that I took on was trying to connect him um, back to his father and then you know in previous generations. So that that took many years to do. Um, so I guess for a while he was probably my favorite, and I'm still very fond of Oscar. Um, I think right now my favorite is probably Sarah Evans Lawrence. Um, and the reason I say that is because she actually just had so much tenacity and, and strength. Um, she, as far as, according to oral history, uh, she was quite young and her parents both died. Um, her father potentially died very tragically, shot in the back. Um, 
And so she was orphaned along with her other siblings. I don't really know if she had any other siblings. That's just what the story says. Um, and she was adopted by this family who raised her quite well, but then she married, they had 10 kids. At one point she separated from her husband because he wouldn't stop drinking. Um, and um, that resulted in more babies every time. <laughs> and she, she kind of, the story is that she said, I don't want to have any more kids. And he said, well, that's too bad. And she went, get out. Um, yeah. So she lived on her own through the period of the Civil War um, with just her children to help support her. And she, she worked and she did all these amazing things for, for a woman in that, in that environment, in that stage of history. Um, eventually moved to Nebraska with one of her kids. She worked at the local newspaper and wrote stories for the newspaper under a pseudonym um, as a male. Um, and eventually dies in Colorado, but she just had such an incredible life. Um, that's, she's probably the one that I'm most intrigued by right now. That's very, very cool. Uh, I mean, I was I was going to ask if you had any interesting stories about your ancestors. That seemed like a pretty interesting story by itself. <laughs> um, do you? So I guess when I see you work, you have contributed on WikiTree. When did you first yeah, discover WikiTree? Oh gosh. What made um, you discover? Well, I know when it was. Um, it was my first Roots Tech, and I'm trying to remember what year it was. Uh, I did a lecture on online trees and why they're important and collaborating with other researchers. And we did a panel, and Chris um, Key Wikitreer was one of the members of the panel. And so pre preparing for that session, um, I became familiar with Wikitree and I, I think I've been, I've had an account ever since. I'll admit I don't use it as much as I probably should, um, but um, <laughs> you'll probably hear that from everybody that you talk to in this thing. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's, um, it, you know, it's an incredible project and an incredible initiative that really spans the globe. And I don't think there's anything really out there that's quite like it. So, um, yeah. Perfect. Definitely unique, Wiki Tree. <laughs> yeah, we, we agree with you there. Nothing like it. And you created your profile here in 2014, so that's been yeah. Okay, more. that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. We did. We did have a. We did have a question from the crowd. Um, Nanette wants to know how long you've been with Find My Past. Yeah, um, almost eight years, actually. Um, I think that, so that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a variety of positions. I started um, on society outreach. I did, um, I was part of the marketing team for a while. I worked on our DNA initiative. I've worked on uh, all sorts of stuff. I uh, worked on the 1939 register, worked now working on the 1921 census, um, which is really exciting. So yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Very exciting. <laughs> I saw some, some light, you know, faces light up when I said 1921. We're excited too. <laughs> Lots of senses yeah. that are coming up that people are excited for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Jim, what are your biggest brick walls at this point? Like the ones that you would want to bust through, if nothing else? So I think the biggest one is Sarah Evans Lawrence. Um, and the reason for that is, be, is because of the family history that's been passed down. It says that her, she is of Welsh descent. Um, and it's the, I ha so let me back up for a second. I have four versions of the same story. So what I think happened is each of the girls of John and Sarah sat down with their parents, probably their mom, and got this story um, and wrote it down. So um, yeah, there she is, that's Sarah. Um, so I have, so these versions of the story have been passed down through descendants and I've contacted as many descendants as I can find. Um, and, and I said, what do you know about Sarah Evans Lawrence? And they all say, oh, here's this oral history. Everything you wanna know is in there, but that's actually the questions I'm trying to answer. Um, so it says that she's of Welsh descent. Um, it possibly her father or her grandfather, I'm not sure which, um, was a Methodist minister. Um, and uh, she was apparently born in New York, but again, was orphaned at a very young age. Um, I don't know exactly when her mother died and I can't find any evidence of any kind of brutal crime. Um, it, it, you know, because the story is that he was shot in the back. Um, he purchased a piece of land, a farm, uh, on, essentially um, on foreclosure. And the guy who lost it to the bank swore up and down that 
anybody who bought his land before he got a chance to kind of, you know, pull it back himself, um, would he would just go and shoot them and kill them. And, and so the story is that my ancestor was just shot in the back uh, in cold blood. But I haven't been able to find any indication of an event like that happening within 10 years of when it could have happened. Um, so Sarah's early story is very intriguing to me. Um, she also is reportedly adopted by a couple in upstate New York somewhere, the Kaisers of Kaiserville, New York. Now there is such a place. It's a very small little community. It's only got um, five or six buildings, I think today, um, but it is possible to find Kaiserville, but I can't find the Kaisers. Um, there is a Kaiser family in the area, but the timelines don't line up. The, the family, um, uh, the families don't line up. Um, they indicate in the oral history that Sarah was their only child. She was adopted, but she was their only child. And this other Kaiser family had several children. So I don't think it, it's them. Um, so just where Sarah comes from is really the biggest question. Uh, and what part of Wales? I'd love to be able to say that I have um, a connection back to every country in the British Isles and Wales is the last one I have to prove. <laughs> well, Hillary, yeah, Hillary. Yeah, Hillary. On the Wales help Project helping. Yes. Hillary is on that, on that side. <laughs> She's over there. So hopefully they can uh, at least bust, if not bust her, maybe find some more information about her. Be pretty yeah, cool. or even just honestly, a, um, you know, research suggestions. I'm not very familiar with Welsh research yet. Um, and honestly, this challenge, it feels very overwhelming. So I really haven't spent much time on Sarah as much as I would like. Um, I, Nanette asked where you got that photo from of Sarah. Yeah, um, the photo is part of the family collection. Um, there's a lot of documentation in my family. I thankfully, gratefully descend from a, a line of pack rats. Uh, so we kept everything. I have over 3,000 uh, pieces of paper ephemera, um, photographs, documents, letters, and certificates, you name it. I, I probably have it in the collection. Um, so that's just part of that collection. Okay. Um, what, so what do you, besides busting down some brick walls, what else do you hope to see by participating in the Wiki Tree Challenge? Uh, you know, I, just watching what you guys did with, for Johnny, I think um, it's a, it's kind of inspiring to get different angles and different thought processes behind how pe different people approach research, right? Um, I'm a huge fan of collaboration. I always have been. Uh, and, you know, as much as I might know about genealogy, someone else is going to know more than I do about a particular area or a particular part of the world or a particular part of history. So um, I'm just excited to see what what kind of inspires you and come what ideas you come up with um i love 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 social history so the newspapers and the the journals and you know hey your ancestor was in this county when this rebellion happened or anything like that so yeah that's that's always fun for me yeah i think that you know wiki tree and the like you said the collaboration really brings different you know it's not just you as you have all these different um insights on you yeah. know genealogy working together so yeah those fresh eyes are really important right mm -hmm. so we have yeah what are your Eng any english brick do you have english. any english walls for those I people do have who are english um which is handy when you work for a british company um so <laughs> i have uh john lawrence who's sarah's husband um who immigrated sometime around 1830 um, he was supposedly born in the Birmingham area in Warwickshire. Um, and again, according to that infamous oral history, um, he theoretically served in the British Army, potentially in India. I have yet to be able to prove that. Um, I haven't been able to f really firmly identify his father. I have a theory of who his father was, um, but my, really, my only clue about his parents is that his father was a silversmith um, in theoretically in the Birmingham area. So I've actually done quite a bit of research on him over the last year and a half or so. Um, he's my current project. Um, and then my other English line is um, Henry Collins, who actually arrived in America in 1635 in Massachusetts. Um, so he was an early settler of Lynn, Massachusetts. And I've done quite a bit of research on him. Um, and I have actually visited his parish uh, in London at St. 
St. Dunstan's in Stepney. Very cool. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wanted uh, to ask if your, so your captains are Janet and Joan. Do you guys have any questions for um, Jen? So many J's, Joan, Janet, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think you've already. Yeah, sorry, I missed them. the question. <laughs> okay, so brick walls. Did you have well, anything? The only thing is, uh, uh, Emma, Emma offered to do the DNA. Uh, I was just right writing down the two others. names. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I happy for her to do that, Jen. Um, so I do have DNA tests out there, but um, the generations that I'm looking at. Um, I feel like the paper trail is going to be significantly important in this instance. So um, I'm, I, I guess I'm generally speaking more interested in the, the paper evidence at this point. Oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, DNA is interesting, but there's, there's so much more to learn from yeah. a social context, right? Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, so, and I noticed in the comments, I've just been reading on the comment thread that someone asked or, you know, made a comment about finding a piece of silver that he created. I would absolutely love to. Um, mm. There's a museum, and I'm trying to remember where it is. Um, it's in England somewhere, but there's a museum, maybe in Birmingham, that has a couple of his pieces, and I'm watching eBay just in case. <laughs> you never know when something might pop up. <laughs> I think I have found the silversmith in newspapers, but yeah. I'd love to find the parish registers and, and actually prove the relationship between mm -hmm. the silversmith and, and John and, mm -hmm. and beyond more than just this happens to be a silversmith in the right place in the right town um, at the right time that's, with the yeah. right surname, you know, and that's about all I've got right now is circumstantial. So I know, so you already have some photos on Wikitree. Do you have others that are already uploaded or scanned? I don't know if you would want to give them to Joan or Janet, or if they have questions, are they able to reach out to you? Yeah, I think, I mean, definitely reach out. I think it'd be most helpful to be as specific as possible. Like I said, I have over 3000 items in the collection um, and it's it's all cataloged. I can easily find everything sitting over here on the shelves. They're all, it's ready to go. But tell me what you want, because if you just say, send me all your photos, I'm going to say no. <laughs> There's no possible way. I, the the 3,000 counts, it does not include all the photos. I probably have another two or 3,000 photos that I have not cataloged yet. My dad was a photographer, so there's a lot oh, of photos wow. in my house. Yeah. I'm super impressed that you have them cataloged, and I yeah. showed you all of my eight. <laughs> <laughs> it has been my, my COVID yeah. lockdown project, actually, indexing and cataloging everything that I have. I started with the, the document part, and I've left the photographs to the end, um, and I haven't worked on them yet. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm very jealous, but I haven't got a single photograph of any of my grandparents. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, I know I'm incredibly lucky. I'm so lucky. Yeah. To have mm -hmm. all this. In fact, some of it actually will probably end up being donated to a historical society in Washington State because I have quite a bit of material that's no relation to me at all. Um, just circum you know, friends of people long gone. We did. So Nanette was asking, is your main tree on Find My Past? Um, if yeah, they wanted it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I do have a, a, a tree on most of the major sites, but you know, of course, find my past is my primary primary tool. Okay. Um, so we have, and let or if we have any other questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, and for people who want to participate in the Wiki Challenge, Minji, do you want to, and how we're collaborating together? Do you want to kind of touch on that a little bit? Yes, and we already have um, people signed up for January and February. We're still taking February signups for a few more days. January, of course, it was closed. So the registration for that is pinned to the top of the, uh, the G2G. Um, we also have this post that you're looking at now. Now, this is where we put any questions. Um, if we find things, if we break down a brick wall, take the great grandparent that it belongs off of that line to and put that those comments in there. You can ask for help there. Um, just put something interesting there. We just want to kind of organize it by great grandparent. We also have the spreadsheet. Do you have spreadsheet. that open, Sarah? Spreadsheet. 
spreadsheet. And here you just <laughs> want to go by your name and put down the profile you're working on. If you decide to take a break for a while or you're done for the day, take that profile ID um, out so it's not next to your name. And that way somebody else can step in and work on it. You know, because we don't want to work, have two, three people start working on the same profile and then you lose information. And then, of course, the final way is Discord. Discord. And we've, we've stayed pretty busy in Discord. It, it stays pretty hot, and there's always somebody talking. Like, uh, like I said earlier, we go back and forth, and we help each other out or just cheer each other on. You know, when they find something, good place to ask questions. If anybody has problems getting into the Discord room, you can just get a hold of your captains or get a hold of me, and we'll make sure you can get in there. Mm -hmm. And we have lots of ways to part, you know, to participate, um, to talk to one another. And it's all been really fun. These past three weeks have been really exciting. And I mean, it's still January. We still have 11 months to go. <laughs> and um, Jen, did you have any questions for us? Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, okay. I, this is, you know, this is quite a project you guys have all taken on um it's it's a huge amount of work and to move from from tree to tree every week is like that's lightning fast so um this is pretty cool and wow i'm yeah. really quite delighted to be a, to be able to participate in some little way well we we thank you for for wanting to participate for taking part in our wiki tree challenge um and we are. I know. I know. Right after we finish this live cast, Joan and Jane are probably going to go straight. To, or, or you're probably going to go to sleep. I don't know. <laughs> I'm having a little peek. Mm -hmm. I know, but I know some people are going to go straight to work. Uh -huh. It'll be very exciting. And then next week we will yeah. reveal. I might do a little bit of work. <laughs> I heard somebody said something. I wasn't sure, no. but well, no, I'll also probably do a little bit of work before hitting the sack. And go oh, Janice, sleep. do some work before bed. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'll probably do a little bit of work for the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are we opening the Janus just at eight p.m. EST time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, people who are in the United States probably challenge have start time. time. Is it? <laughs> it's the chat. Oh, Jan's a yeah. little bit. Well, originally you said eight p p m eight p m EST time, but is that as the chat has come forward, has the start to forward? So are we, we're starting on Jen's week right now, right, Mindy? Like it has, we finished yeah. Johnny, then we're starting Jen's. Yeah, I'm um, sure there's already of, people that have started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, just because of the time of the live cast, we're kind of determining the start okay. and end of the, and next week should be 8 p.m., okay. but I can't promise yet, I'm not sure. But it should be 8 p.m., if not 6 p.m. And then we also have our live cast on Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern time for a weekly recap of Wikitree and just a little update on the Wikitree challenge. So if nobody else has any questions or comments hmm. or anything. So I'll, um, I have one thing I'll add. I, I okay. don't think it's on her profile yet. I will add the oral history document to John and Sarah's profiles uh, right after this. So everybody can read that and start breaking it apart. Perfect. That's yeah so if you yeah jen if you want you can either oh, um, you can add stuff would yourself be you can yeah. um you can post in that g2g thread you'll see it it's like tagged on your profile um <laughs> so if you just want to see what's going on you're able to do that and then be in contact with janet and joan if they have questions they'll ask you so and yeah sounds good and I, I love watching all of the interaction between all of our wiki trees. I haven't actually done any research yet. Hopefully I will. <laughs> um, I've, maybe next, I don't know. It's been crazy, but it's all still really exciting. I love seeing what our, what our great volunteers are doing with this.
Yeah, and really, really quickly here, Sarah, somebody's asking if we can point out GMT time. Next week's um, live cast should be at 8 p.m. Eastern time, but that's one o'clock in the morning for GMT. Mm -hmm. So just to put it in perspective, I mean, our obviously our Wiki Tree members are everywhere. We have a lot of mm -hmm. time zones covered. Yeah, so that's what we have the Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and then um, Wednesdays at either, usually in the evening time, Eastern time. So we try to switch it up. But they're all they're all recorded, and you can watch them on either YouTube or Facebook. You can watch them as many times as you want. If you want to watch it 10 times in a row, you can. I'm not stopping you. <laughs> so if there is nothing else, I guess we will go. And then, yeah, they were asking what Jen's time zone is. She lives in the Rockies, says Karen. Yep, I'm in the mountain time zone. So, yeah, Karen's right, seven hours behind uh, GMT. I do that so, math in my head every day, all day long. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Johnny. It was great working with you this, thank this you, week. Everyone. And this then thank fun. you, Jen. And thank you, everybody who's watching. And thank you to our captains. Thank you, everybody. We will see you either Saturday or Wednesday, depending. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.